Hello, and welcome to our Tuesday night live Bible study. I'm glad to be back with you. Last week, uh, Jamie and I took a little vacation and went four wheeling. We went places that you would never believe a vehicle could go. Yeah. I mean, it, it was amazing. And you tell stories, and I'm like, I, it uh, I, crazy. I won't take the time to tell you, but it was fun. <laughs> and anyway, last week, Carrie taught. Yep. But this week, uh, Carrie's hosting. We're glad that you're with us, and I'm going to let uh, Carrie give you some information. We would love to have you participate and share questions, and also uh, we've got so many ways we can minister to you, so Carrie will share Amen. all that. Well, welcome everybody to Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. Andrew's back, and so you're going to be blessed tonight. So for those of you that are part of our Tuesday Night family, you know how this goes. You get to interact with us. We get to answer questions. So again, whatever form that you're watching on, go down to the chat section and ask your questions. And we're going to take about 15 minutes here at the end and, and answer your questions. So at, try to ask something that's maybe according to topic, and we'll get to even more of your questions tonight. And for those of you that are joining us for the first time, welcome. We're so excited. This Bible study is just, it's, it's a powerful thing that this ministry is doing. Not just Tuesday nights, though. We are doing it five days a week. So on Monday and Friday, we have 10 o'clock morning Bible studies. And then Tuesday and Thursday night is 6 p.m. And then bright and early Wednesday morning at 7 p.m. So we're able to touch any time in there. And then also Monday nights, we have our Truth and Liberty broadcast. Mm -hmm. And it was super powerful, you guys. You want to check out Last that. night, we had Lance Wallnauer with us and he it's amazing that man the influence that he has and what God is doing if you miss that you need to go look at it go look it, at it be good amen and then on Thursday afternoons we have our healing school we have live stream healing school so that's awesome if you're saying I need to grow in my faith concerning healing or someone who needs healing have them watch that on Thursday afternoon so just so much happening in the ministry that's seven live streams a week seven live streams that a we week. do on a regular basis and then we have some special live yep. streams beyond that and then also for uh, we just started Karis Bible College this school year. So today was our second day of Karis Bible College. So then also on Monday and Wednesdays, we have worship that is live streamed in the mornings. And then also our chapels on Fridays and Tuesday chapels with you for uh, offering and uh, prosperity. So we just, we're doing so much to be able to reach you wherever you're at and whatever time period you're at. So we're so excited about that. So, but if you want to ask questions today, then again, go to your chat section and send in your questions. We'll get to those as many as possible. Also, when you want to interact with us, not only just through the question and answers, but we have all of our prayer ministers standing by. So our prayer ministers are trained in the word of God. When they pray with you guys, it is the word, it is power, and it's in faith. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get super blessed. So call us at 719-635-1111. And when you do that, they're going to be able to pray over you. But also if you're going through something specific and saying, what does the word say about this? This is what I'm needing to grow in. Then ask them because they're going to be able to direct you to all of Andrew's material with in the ministry, our CDs and books and tapes and all of that, but also what you should maybe listen to of the 200,000 hours of free material we have on our website. So guys, we have so much we want to bless you with, and we're just excited about being able to bless you. And if you've been blessed by this ministry, well, then also you have an opportunity to partner with us. This is a viewer supported broadcast. And if you're saying I'm getting blessed so many times in the week, I want to be a part of helping reach more people with the good news. Well, then partner up with us. You can go to AWMI dot net slash give or when you call the prayer ministers to get prayer and to order something well then go ahead and, and sign up if you want to be a, a partner or to donate we would love that so uh, also on Tuesday nights especially on Tuesday nights we give a Bible study notes so whatever Andrew or any other minister is ministering on we'll send you the notes from the Bible study and if you haven't signed up real easy uh, awm.net slash Bible study and you can get the notes and what we'll do is we'll send those to you every Every week and that is a tremendous blessing and when you do that you get enrolled for a free gift and so this week we have effortless change I was just ministering um Third, well, yesterday, Monday. I was just ministering Monday morning and telling people they needed to call in and order this book. I was ministering book. on that this morning for two hours. Oh, it's good, really guys. Awesome. It's effortless change. This is a powerful, it says the word is a seed and can change your life. So if you have not signed up for the Bible study notes and said, I would like an opportunity to possibly win this, well, then do that. And last week, um, actually last week I didn't teach. It was Pastor Greg. I taught the week before. I just realized that because last week, Pastor Greg gave away his book on flowing in the supernatural. And so 
so he gave two copies of that away. And Nancy Chan and Vicki Carey Lewis, you won those, and so we're going to get those out to you. So thank you guys for being so a part of this. He gave away two books. Just he gave away two. Try and outdo me. Get more people to respond. You know, some people know how to work it. <laughs> you know, I heard Pastor Greg uh, preach his last Sunday, and he was talking about how he's, you know, been watching all the riots and all the news stuff and um, it actually got to him and he used some of the scriptures over in uh, First Peter or Second Peter chapter 2 where it says that uh, Lot, a righteous man, vexed his soul from day to day watching their unlawful deeds. Mm -hmm. And so he was just making a confession that you know you hear so much bad news it begins to affect you. And then he, the rest of the teaching was how you need to focus on the Lord and and it was excellent teaching that he did. But that got me to thinking about Psalm 73. Mm. And Psalm 73 is probably not one of those uh, passages in your Bible that's all marked up. <laughs> because there's some things in it that honestly are not correct. Now some people may struggle and say, what are you saying? The Bible's incorrect. No, the Bible is perfect. But the person who wrote this, Asaph, he was expressing his negative feelings about the way that the ungodly seem to prosper and do better sometimes than the godly people do. Mm -hmm. And so the things that he was expressing, they were wrong, but it wasn't wrong for it to be recorded in Scripture. And we can relate to this. And this is the reason that I want to teach on this tonight is to just show some of the attitudes that he had that I believe many of you watching this will probably have the same attitude and think this is the right way to think. And yet, then at the end of this psalm, he comes back and shows you why that thinking was wrong and what is the proper way to do it and how to uh, control your emotions and to control your attitude towards things. So I just want to read through the 73rd psalm. It's a little bit lengthy. It's got 28 verses in it. And I probably won't have time to comment on every one. But as Carrie was saying, one of the things we do is put out our notes. And if you sign up, I've got, I couldn't even tell you because it's in a digital form on my computer, but I bet you it would equal 10 or 15 pages awesome. worth of notes on this that I've written comment and stuff. And it would really be a blessing to you. So uh, here in Psalms chapter 73, in verse 1, this is Asaph, a, a psalm of Asaph. It says, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. And of course, that's a great statement and that's absolutely accurate. But then in verse 2, he begins to start expressing his own doubt and unbelief and some of the struggles that he had. And he says, But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Again, this is not the way it's supposed to be. He's just being candid that, you know, he had, he had really struggled with yeah, some things. Yeah. In verse 3, he says, For I was envious of the foolish when I saw uh, the prosperity of the wicked. You know, Carrie and I were just talking about a mutual friend before we went on the air, and I was asking how they were doing. And anyway, this guy basically sold his soul mm -hmm. to the devil, walked away from his wife and from what he was doing for $1,500 a month, Amen. which that to him was a lot of money, but that's wrong. Yep. And uh, you know what it was? He was envious of the wicked. Yep. He was in ministry. This man has seen people raised from the dead. Yep. He should know better. Yep. And yet he was struggling financially. He became envious of other people that, mm -hmm. you know, had more in the natural realm than he had. He wasn't looking at things correctly. And that's what Asaph yep. is describing right here. And I know that there's people watching this that you may love the Lord and you know that God wants you to go in this direction and yet you see somebody over here who's not serving God and yet their marriage seems to be good, their yeah. kids are doing good, they've got money, it seems like all these things are happening. And mm -hmm. if you aren't careful, you'll make the same mistakes that Asaph made. Yep. So this is really important and I think it's especially important during this time when we see the riots and we see people in government positions, leadership that have attitudes that are completely contrary to the Word of God and yet people honor them and respect them mm -hmm. and things like this. And if you aren't careful, you'll get to looking at this and thinking, does it really pay yeah. to serve God? Mm -hmm. That's a dangerous thought. That's a path that leads to Have you ever dealt with that? No. Because you serve the Lord your whole life. You've been committed. Once, once you have a relationship with the yeah. Lord, nothing compares to that. Yeah. Once you know how much God loves you, 
and you fall in love with God, then everything else, it's like uh, Paul talks about, you know, that, that the love of God actually helps you to see what is priceless and what is worthless. And your value system completely changes if the Word of God is the place where you set your values. Jamie and I went through severe poverty. I mean, probably m worse than most people watching this. And it was all self-inflicted. But nonetheless, we went through severe poverty, but I never one time became envious of somebody else because I had a relationship with the Lord through it. And I knew it was like you were saying the valley, you go through the valley of the shadow of death, but you go through it. You I don't knew, stay there. I knew I was going through. I knew that this wasn't where I was going to be. I wasn't going to stay in that campground. And that hope kept me from ever getting to a place where I was truly envious, but I do admit that there were times I wondered about, God, I'm serving you and I'm giving you everything I've got and it just doesn't seem like things are working. Yeah. And I think everybody uh, deals with that sometime or another. So anyway, Asaph goes on to say, says, but there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. You know, I wouldn't doubt that this, there's some people that look this way, but that is really not true. Mm -hmm. People that don't know the Lord, the scripture says over in uh, Hebrews chapter 2, I believe it's verse 14 or 15, it talks about Jesus came to deliver those who all the, who through all of their lifetime were, were subject to bondage through fear of death. Mm -hmm. Death is terrifying to people that don't know the Lord and don't know where they're going. Yep. And so some people may have no bands in their death. I'm not doubting that what Asaph uh, said might have been true in some people or somebody he looked at, but as a whole, this is an untrue statement. And you'll find out that when you get into the dumps and you get to feeling sorry for yourself and you're like Elijah saying, Lord, I'm the only one left, <laughs> he knew better. Yep. Over in 1 Kings chapter 18, I believe it's around verse 11 or 12, Obadiah had told him there's still a hundred prophets that he had fed through this thing. Elijah knew that there were at least a hundred preachers still serving God, but it didn't matter what the truth was. He felt like he was the only one. Yeah. And there's people that do that and they, they know that there's somebody that loves them and yet they'll get upset and nobody loves me and they'll get to looking at things through this glass of criticism and, and feeling sorry for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what Asaph is doing right here. And so he goes on to say in verse 5, They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued as other men. Again, that is a uh, false impression. Mm -hmm. But there are times it look like that. You see people on these magazine covers mm -hmm. that, um, you know, are being worshipped by other people. I mean, literally, they are being worshipped and because they got money or they've got good looks or they marry this famous person. But inside, it's not satisfying. They can't make the marriage last. They're committing suicide. Yep. I just, I don't know these people, but I just read that there's some people just in the last uh, week or so that are super famous, had everything in the natural and committed suicide at a young age in their 30s. Wow. That's just terrible. Wow. And so it goes on to say in verse 6, Therefore, pride compass, compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. In other words, they have no fear of, of retribution. They're above the law and stuff. And so they just do what they want. They're violent to other people. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. And so the way he's describing this, these are people that were very prosperous in the natural realm, had all of the acclaim of people. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak folly. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue uh, walketh through the earth. In other words, this is just the old English way of saying that, man, they talk against God and they, don't, they let it be broadcast throughout the entire earth. They don't care. They have no fear of God. They feel like, you know, God, uh, they're above God. That God's not going to have anything to do with them. And you know what? We see this today that there are people saying things. They're burning Bibles. Yeah. There used to be people that whether they served God or not, they respected God. They had a fear of God. But now they're burning Bibles. They're burning flags. They're doing all of these things. And it's this exact attitude. And it looks like that they're getting by with it. There's people that are killing others. And because they're a part of a mob and a riot, they're getting by with it. They hadn't been caught and stuff. And if, if you aren't careful, you could look at that and say, well, what's the benefit of serving the Lord? Mm -hmm. That's what Asaph is saying. Yeah. And so it says in verse 10, Therefore his people return hither 
and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. In other words, these people seem to be uh, lording it over God's people. They're winning. It looks like they've got the upper hand. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? In other words, they don't deny that there is a God. They just don't think that God's paying attention, that God's going to judge them. There's a lot of people today that don't acknowledge that there is a hell and that someday we're going to stand before God and because of it, they, they just think like they're an animal and it doesn't yeah. matter what they do. When they die, they'll go out and kill people and then commit suicide thinking they escaped punishment. Mm -mm. No, they just ushered themselves into a Christless eternity. Wow. And it says, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. Now see, these are some of the statements that if you don't understand what this psalm is doing and you just read this, you could come to the conclusion that serving God doesn't have any purpose. You, it's mm -hmm. vain. It's not going to benefit you. That's what he's saying, but that's not the truth. He's just expressing to you the depths of despair that he fell into. In verse 16, For all the day long have I uh, been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of my children. In other words, he's saying, I don't want to say these things because I could be considered an unbeliever, blaspheming against God, but this is the way I feel. And so he saw this struggle. He felt these things. He didn't want to speak it because he felt like he, he knew it was wrong to speak it. And then he says, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. And there's a lot of people that this is the way they deal with things. When they see things like the Bible says it's God's will for you to be well, and yet they aren't well, and they see other people who are believing God and trying to get well, and they don't get well, and they die, and they see this unbeliever over here that it doesn't seem like he even gets sick and stuff, you could sit there and go to comparing yourself and yep. get the feeling exactly the way Asaph felt. And yet there's a lot of people that see this conflict and they never resolve it. They ju it's just too painful and so they just ignore it and they kind of bury these things. I tell you, you have to face your fears. You have to face unbelief. You can't ignore it. Unbelief and fear, depression, discouragement, wrong thinking doesn't leave automatically. It has to be, it has to be kicked out. It has to be taken captive. Scripture says we take our thoughts captive. And so he was saying it was too painful for him. And, but look at this in verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Yeah. In other words, if you're just looking at things with a carnal mind and evaluating things only on human terms, you can come to these wrong conclusions that cause you to be discouraged. You could see these people tearing down statues, doing cancel culture, sitting here rewriting history, uh, I read about one uh, newsman this last week that somebody, one of these uh, Patriot prayer guys was shot in the head and, and killed and this reporter was standing there and he said he saw people around that were literally dancing over his body and rejoicing because some fascist has been killed. When you see things like that, if you aren't careful, you could just think, what's the use? Mm. And you could be discouraged. But when you go into the sanctuary, when you go into the God's house, when you look at things from God's perspective, all of a sudden you see things differently. And so here is where he begins to change and get out of this self-pity and this in being envious of others. And he said in verse 18, Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into the destruction. In other words, he's describing that whatever high ground they have, whatever prosperity they have, it's short-lived and it's a slippery slope and man, they can lose everything just as quickly as they got it. And if you were to look at things in the light of eternity, it changes everything. Some people may prosper in this life and I can't tell you all of the reasons why, but I think part of it is, is because they're going to be punished for eternity. And so God lets them prosper mm -hmm. because it's very short-lived from his perspective. And he, you know, the goodness of God leads us to repentance, Romans chapter 2, verse 11. And God will let some people just prosper. He will, you know, some of the richest people in the world are very, very ungodly people. Mm -hmm. And he will let them do it because they are going to be living in poverty and misery the rest of their life in eternity. And so he gives them this, but they're in a slippery place and it's short-lived. Yeah. He goes on to say, how are they brought into 
desolation. As in a moment, they are utterly uh, consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. In other words, this is saying that when you look at things from God's perspective, every single unjust thing is going to be judged. Yeah. It says in Matthew chapter 12, I forget the exact verse, around verse 30 something, it says, Every idle word that men speak shall they give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. And so God is going to hold people accountable for their words, for their actions. He's going to awake, and when He does, He's going to despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reign. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. In other words, now Asaph, once he's looked at things from the light of eternity, and he recognizes that mm -hmm. God's going to right every wrong, nobody gets by with anything. Mm -hmm. Whether this person that shot a man uh, in the head or in the chest and killed him, whether he ever gets caught or not, you could look at that and say, well, he got by with it. But I can guarantee you, he's not going to get by with it. God is going to hold people accountable yeah. for every single thing unless they receive the forgiveness and get cleansed of those things through Jesus. And so when Asaph finally looked mm -hmm. at things from God's perspective and realized that what you see with your eyes is not the full story. There's, there's a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. He says, how foolish was I? I was like an animal, like a brute beast. And he says, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holding me by thy right hand. Even though he was so wrong in his thinking, he was still holding on to the fact that God still loves me. There's a scripture that says, God knows our frame. He remembers that we're but dust. Yeah. And praise God for His Amen. mercy and grace towards us. Even though Asaph got into total unbelief and actually got to envying people who were doomed to failure and doomed to being damned throughout all eternity, God still loved him. He didn't turn away. And he says, Then shalt thou guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none on earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they are far from thee, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. So basically what this whole psalm is about is about a man who just was looking at things in only in the natural, only from a human perspective. And in the natural, there are people that may have more money and more fame, and they may have a better looking mate than you have. They may have a better looking house. They may have a better car. It may look like they're succeeding more. But if they don't know the Lord, when you go into God's house, when you look at things through God, yeah you'll find out that they have nothing. Jesus said it this way, what good does it do a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? We put so much importance on the house that you live in, the car that you drive, and things like this, and whether people have fame. There's people that will literally sell their soul to the devil to become famous. They will you know, go out and be perverse, and that'll get you headlines, and man, you, you'll get noticed. Yep. But man, you're destroying yourself. And if you aren't careful, you'll get to looking at that and you'll think that they're better off than I am. But again, your relationship with God is priceless. Yep. And this life, it doesn't matter if you live 90 years or 100 years. It's like the snap of a finger compared to eternity. And it says over in Matthew in uh, chapter 24 that then shall the righteous shine forth as the light and as the sun rising. And when we stand before God, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But for those of us who put our faith in the Lord, we've been forgiven and we're going to be rewarded and we're going to be given things. And some people that in the natural realm have never been given any acclaim, they are going to shine bright. And yep. the, some of the people that have had all of this attention and stuff, man, they're going to be embarrassed, yeah. even Christians. Yeah. I'm not saying that we will lose our salvation or be punished, 
But I think that there's, there's you know, there are going to be some people like me that were on television and maybe millions of people knew you and things like this, but there's going to be some little old lady that just <laughs> used to pray and she did what God told her to do and she did it better than I did and they're going to shine brighter. Maybe they weren't given the same assignment and didn't have as much, much people noticing them, but they fulfilled their assignment much better than I did. And we just evaluate things. Yeah, yeah. It's in good. a very carnal way. And you need to constantly, constantly be aware of this because the world is not presenting things from a godly perspective at all. They're looking at things in a totally carnal perspective. They will glorify these people that if you were to put all of their integrity in a thimble, it wouldn't, it'd be nearly empty. They don't have any <laughs> integrity. Man, they're living in, they're living like an animal in sexual things. They are mean, they're bitter all of this kind of stuff, and yet they get the attention, they get all of the fame, they get the money. And if you aren't careful, you could become envious of that, but you just need to look at things from God's perspective and recognize that this, this life isn't all there is. Matter of fact, I was reading another scripture where David said that evil and wicked men shall not live out half their days. Mm -hmm. wow. Even in this life, you don't prosper. Yeah. You aren't going to have true joy and peace in your heart if you aren't seeking the Lord. But even if you never saw failure, if your finances didn't crash, if your health didn't crash, if your marriage didn't crash mm -hmm. in this life, you're going to be standing before God someday. And I guarantee you, He's not going to judge you based on the Newsweek cover or the Sports Illustrated nope. swimsuit edition. No, that's right. <laughs> you're going to stand before God and give an answer mm -hmm. for the way that you lived. And there's going to be people who were revered in this life that are going to be, I'm, it's going to be tragic. Yeah. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be passing. When, and I, I mean, I'd hate to be in that moment where you realize, man, everything I've lived for and worked for was worthless. I was singing a song when I was out walking this afternoon and it, and one of the lines says, until I stand with joy before the throne. And most people Mm -hmm. Talk about that when you stand before the throne, man, there's going to be terror. It's going to be fear. You're going to be judged. But for the person who's a believer, you are going to have joy yep. standing before the throne. Not because you deserve it, not because you did everything right, but because Jesus totally purged you and there's no more atonement for Amen. your sin. He's already forgiven all of your sin, past, present, and future. And for the believer, I believe that when we stand before the Lord, there's actually going to be joy. Yeah. Think about that. Stand before God Almighty <laughs> and all of the wrong, stupid, evil things that we've done. We're still going to be able That's to good. rejoice. Man, heaven's going to be a blast. Amen. But then those people who have shook their fist in the face of God and burned Bibles and, and blasphemed God yeah. and lived a life like, who cares what God's standards are? I'm going to love this person of the same sex. I'm going to choose to be a woman today and a man tomorrow. And you just thumb your, your nose at God and don't care. I guarantee yeah. you those people are going to be in absolute terror. Yeah. So we need to do everything we can to reach I, them down. I love this verse. It says, it is good for me to draw near to God. I put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. And when you find that your trust is in the Lord and you find relationship, you draw near to Him, all of a sudden you have a different purpose. And it's not about what you have, what you look like, how you're seen, but boy, changing people's lives and being knowing that God is using you and you're making a difference mm -hmm. and you're where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing, saying what you're supposed to say, it's so worth it. it it's awesome. It's awesome. So if you have been confused mm. by some of the things that you see. Sometimes it looks like, man, the godly people are being persecuted and the ungodly are the ones that have the upper hand. Go back to Psalm 73 and read it and recognize that that's mm. just because you aren't looking at things through God's eyes. When you go into the sanctuary, when you look at things from God's perspective, it's temporary. They're on a slippery slope. It's not going to last. You will shine like the sun and... Uh, I think it'll help you to be able to process all the stuff you see. That's good. So uh, uh, some of these questions, and, and Andrew has, has talked about them, but just a little bit more in depth. Tiffany on YouTube asked this. She says, I often envy people who do ungodly things for money because they seem to have it all, and I'm without a job. 
How do I stay positive in the natural when everyone else seems to be doing better than me? That's exactly what we've been talking about all Amen. night. And you know, the way you do it, if nothing else, you can believe and have hope that things are going to improve in this life. And I believe that that's God's best for you, Tiffany. But if you never saw it work in this life, Turn over to John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. And if nothing else, just go to thinking about whether you ever see prosperity in this life or not, yeah. you are going to live in a mansion on streets that are paved with gold. You're going to be there with Jesus with God, the glory of God, and these people that you're envious of right now are going to be tormented in hell. Yeah. Look at things that way, and when you look at it from God's perspective, you can actually pity people who have all the world has to offer, but they don't have the peace on the inside. So yeah. that's worst case scenario. Just put it into the light of eternity, but even that, God, God's will is to prosper you. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So God wants to prosper you in this life. And if you just won't throw your faith away, if you won't get into this unbelief like Asaph did, and if you keep saying, Father, I know you want to prosper me now. And if I don't see it in this life, I'll see it in the next. That's right. Then uh, you can uh, still keep your faith. Yeah. You keep your eyes on the things that are unseen versus the things that I are seen. I thought of that as I was giving that answer, but I would have preached on <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Amen. That's good. So Joe asked this on chat. He says, can the devil give people prosperity and Absolutely. riches? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. People sell their soul to the devil and he will reward them. It's temporary though. If you look at people, I could call names right now. I'm, I'm thinking of an actor who had everything, has won awards and everything, and yet wound up committing suicide. Mm -hmm. He had nothing. Satan will give you things. It's kind of like you, you throw bait out in the water and it's got something on there that you want, but there's a hook in it. And once he hooks you, yeah. he'll reel you in. And the end result of it is to steal, to kill, and destroy, John chapter 10. But he will give you prosperity. He will cause you to prosper. Yeah. He'll give you all of the jewels that you want. If you'll sell your soul for, mm -hmm. for prosperity, he'll give it to you, but you'll wind up losing it all. Yeah. Amen. So uh, Ruthie asks this. She says, is it only the unsaved that will be held accountable for their actions and words? Well, the scripture says that uh, this is in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I believe it is, that all of us, and he's talking to believers, will stand before the Lord that we may give an account of the things done in our flesh, whether they be good or bad. Mm -hmm. So Christians are going to be judged, but not for the purpose of punishment. It's going to be for the purpose of rewards. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it talks about that you got to be careful what you build. He says, I've laid the foundation of Jesus, but some people are building gold, silver, and precious stones. Other people wood, hay, and stubble. And when we stand before God, the fire is going to be put to every man's works of what sort it is, not what size it is. Yeah but what sort it is, whether it was God or whether it was you that did it. Mm. And it says that if a person has built with wood, hay, and stubble, which is talking about non-godly materials, in other words, you've done things on your own and stuff, then you will suffer loss, but you will be saved yet so as by fire. So I don't believe that Christians are going to be punished. Christians aren't going to be rejected, but we are going to give an answer Forever. for the way we lived and what we did and if you live a godly life and respond to God, there's going to be crowns. There's going to be rewards. Paul talked about that there was a reward laid up for him. Yeah. And so there's no bad way to get into heaven. I don't think anybody's going to be feeling like a second-class citizen, but I do think that we're going to stand <laughs> before God and we're going to see Carrie over here who's rewarded, who gave up, moved to Russia, had mm. given up things and served God. And she's going to be having rewards and here's somebody else who Jesus loved just as much and you'll enter into heaven and you'll have a mansion, but you're going to be sit there with nothing but a pile of ashes, but your foundation will get you in. Amen. Man, I don't want to be like that. Mm -hmm. I want to get all the rewards I can, not so that I can use them for myself, but it says then they take all of their crowns and throw them 
at the feet of Jesus and I want to be able to get rewards and then turn around and give them all back and say it was you, Jesus, that did this. Any good thing that ever happened through me. So Amen. you will give an account for your actions but not for the purpose of punishment or rejection. Yeah, that's good. So Daniel on YouTube asks this. He says, how do we fix our eyes on Jesus and keep them fixed on him? Well, it's a hard attitude, but there's natural things you can do. One of them is to quit listening to the bad news. Yes. If you are on this 24-hour news cycle so that every waking moment you're constantly checking what the news is, you're going to be discouraged. Yes. It says over there in 2 Peter chapter 2 that, that Lot, this righteous man, vexed his righteous soul from day to day by beholding their unlawful deeds. Mm -hmm. If you are looking at evil, it's going to affect you. Yeah. Now, I don't believe that God wants us to put our head in the sand and ignore things, but there's a difference between literally just being saturated and baptized in unbelief and negative things and just having an awareness that there is evil out there. Yeah. And yet most Christians... You pay hundreds of dollars a month to have ungodliness piped into your house and you watch movies and you listen to things and watch news and stuff that's not news at all. It's propaganda. So one of the ways that you keep your eyes focused on Jesus is to keep your eyes focused on Jesus and not on anything else. You know, there's a scripture. I'd have to look up the verse. It's in Psalms. I think it might be, uh, I'm not, anyway, I could find it. But David said, no Wicked thing will I set before my eyes. That is one awesome scripture. Yep. You ought to put that over your television. <laughs> you and it just, just stay off all the you time. You ought to put that. On, well, no, because I'm on television. There, there's some people, oh, that's true. <laughs> there's some good things on television. But I guarantee you, if you had a sign that you put on top of your television, no evil thing, no wicked thing will I set before my eyes. And if you looked at that every time you turned your TV on, you wouldn't turn your TV on as much. Yep. Yeah, it's good. So it's a hard attitude, and we can't live a totally... Uh, sequestered life. God doesn't want us to. We're the salt of the earth and to do any good, we got to get out of the salt shaker. You've got to have some knowledge of what's happening, but I tell you, you don't have to overdose on it. Yeah, that's good. Mandy asked this. She said, how do I respond to an unbelieving family member who blasphemes and says terrible things and how do I respond to unbelievers? Well, I can give you the way I've done it, but that's not necessarily the best way. I'm kind of blunt. <laughs> And you can, you can use tact, but you do have to respond. Uh, here's the way I look at it. It says in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, it says, No weapon formed against you will prosper. And then the next phrase says, And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, thus saith the Lord. That is saying that words are weapons. And if you hear somebody blaspheming God and speaking unbelief, say, for instance, glorifying these rioters and saying they deserve it. This is payback for what they've done. Mm -hmm. And if you hear somebody saying things like that, those words are weapons. And it says, you shall condemn them. And here's what I've learned. If I hear somebody speaking unbelief, doubt, blasphemy around me, and if I don't say something because I don't want to offend them and wind up in a confrontation, then when I get by myself, it may take me 30 minutes, an hour or more to flush this poison mm -hmm. out of my system. But if when I hear unbelief, I just say no, yep. and I speak against it and condemn it, it has no effect on me. Mm -hmm. And so you have to counter this. Now, there's tactful ways to do it. I'm not always the most tactful. But, I, you know, there was one time I was playing basketball with some guys, and there were just some other guys that walked up. We'd never seen them before, didn't know them, and we started playing, and they were blaspheming God, and every time they missed a shot or something, they would talk about Jesus in ways that you shouldn't. <laughs> they were saying terrible things. And, again, it was affecting me. I hated it. And so... I'm not sure this is the way you should do it, but the way I did it is every time I, something happened to me, instead of blaspheming God, I'd go, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And I just started praising God. <laughs> and after a couple of times, these guys looked at me and says, what are you doing? 
And I said, you praise your God, I'll praise my God. <laughs> and I said it in a way that wasn't condemning. It was kind of like a joke. And they thought it was funny. And the rest of the time, every time they'd mess up, they'd start to cuss and they'd look at me and they'd go, hallelujah. And I'd go, hallelujah. <laughs> even though they weren't sincere, I stopped hearing this stuff and we left friends. And when they left, they were happy about it. <laughs> and yet I got a witness. I got across to them that that is not acceptable. Yeah. And yet I did it in a way that didn't offend them. Mm -hmm. Now, you might be able to do things more tactful than I do, but there's always a way that you can take a stand and you try not to be offensive, but you don't, don't sit there and not speak the truth because you're afraid of their response. You just do the right thing as much as possible, as much as lies within you, live peaceably with all men, but recognize you can't get along with everybody. That's right. So another question here, Blossom on chat asked this. She says, I have, I have some bad things in my past. How will I answer in heaven? You'll answer, thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me for my sins. Amen. When you stand before the Lord, there is not going to be any shame because Jesus bore your shame and condemnation. There's going to be no condemnation. Actually, you know, I believe that the people who have done the worst are actually going to be praising God the most. Mm -hmm. because they'll look at somebody who lived a very relatively godly life, who gave up their life, who was martyred for the sake of the Lord, and they'll see this person accepted into heaven, and they'll think, oh, God, I don't stand a chance. And then God is going to give them the same size mansion. They aren't going to get a second-class mansion. And you're going to see that God treats you just as good as He treats the Apostle Paul and you are going to have more to praise God for than the Apostle Paul because he deserved it more than you did. Wow. So in a way, the people who have done the least, I think, are going to be some of the most grateful and mm -hmm. thankful. You will give an answer. You may not get rewards if you didn't do anything that you know was godly, but you will be thankful. You, you aren't going to be punished because Jesus yeah. bore your punishment. That's good. So Terry on Facebook asked this, Revelations 21, 4 talks about heaven and no more crying, mourning, or tears. I'm believing that my family will get right with God, but if they don't, how will that not bring anguish and great sorrow to me in heaven? You know, I've dealt with that, and I can understand what you're saying. We just lost a friend of mine who was a, a good man. I mean, a great friend to me, and yet, as far as I know, he wasn't a believer. I witnessed to him, and he, but he was a good man. Yeah. And you wonder about, man, how, you know, how is it that he's going to suffer in hell forever? I don't have an answer to all of this, but I'll tell you this. God is more compassionate than I am or than you are. And when you are in heaven and you see things from God's perspective and you aren't relating and comparing yourself among yourself and measuring yourself by yourself, which 2 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says is not wise. When you look at things from God's perspective, you will not have any disappointment or bitterness over the judgment that God gives. He is 100% merciful and you will see things from His perspective and you will agree and you will uh, agree with it. And really when you stop and think about it, God doesn't send anybody to hell. God tries to reach people. It's like if you could imagine you're going someplace and God just puts these obstacles in your path. It's like God builds this mountain of conviction and people coming across your path trying to turn you away from your destination and yet you climb over every one of them and persist. It's not God that really sends people to hell. People choose that over their self and all He's doing is enforcing their decision. They chose not to have God. Well, then you can reap what you've sown. Mm -hmm. And so I, that is a problem. I don't know exactly how to answer that, but I can guarantee you when you get to heaven, the Bible shows us in the book of Revelation, people rejoicing at the judgment of the Lord when people are thrown into the pit and saying, God, you're righteous. You're holy. You're going to see things differently. Today, we don't look at things from a proper, proper perspective. Our sense of right and wrong is skewed. Yeah. Like there's people today saying that being transgendered is okay and having sex with somebody of the same uh, sex is okay and having sex outside of marriage is okay. And we have so many skewed uh, values. But man, when you stand before God, everything's going to come back. You will see things the way they're supposed to be and you will not disagree with God's judgment at mm -hmm. all. 
I can guarantee it. Wow, that's good. I think we're out of time. I think we're out of time. So, and we only had a few more questions, but thank you guys. And, and I believe that even some of the other questions we didn't get answered, you still answered uh, by doing that. So. Amen. So we're grateful that you guys Amen. joined us. Man, I, I enjoy this Tuesday night Bible study. And like Carrie was saying, remember that we have this five days a week. Plus we have a Monday night live cast. We have a Thursday afternoon live cast live cast yep. and then we live cast chapel services and worship services all kinds of yes. things so uh, go to our website awmi.net and you can check out all of those things and I think if I'm not mistaken you can put some kind of a marker that will notify you when there's a live cast. Maybe. Yeah I believe so you can uh, when you go to awmi.net just check that out check, go into all of our you can also watch all the archives as well and so if you go on there you'll be able to see the archives and if you're saying hey I want to catch up on some of these other Bible studies I want to listen to something a little bit more throughout the day I'm doing something I need to listen to the word well then go to the archives and that's a way you can also also listen to everything that we're doing. And so as Carrie said, we've got over 200,000 hours worth of free material on our website. You got no excuse not to keep your eyes on the Lord. Yeah. Amen. We and provide Go to this. gospeltruth.tv. Also, we have amazing content on there with with Andrew and friends, other people that are ministering and so there's it's just going to be a tremendous blessing. So there it's, is no excuse. It's our internet uh, TV station and we have I, I think there's 15 different broadcasters mm -hmm. plus we play conferences and yep. we have musicals on there and just a wealth of things. So check it out, gospeltruth.tv. Amen. And it will not, you'll not be anything evil before your sight. Amen. <laughs> so God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next week and remember all of these other daily uh, Bible studies that we have. God bless you. Amen.